in this video, we're going to walk through how to create a pre-launch landing page for your e-commerce store on Shopify. So the benefit of this is that you are able to start growing your email list before you actually launch your website and before you're able to sell your product. So this is super important. So when you launch the business, you have a group of people that are like ready to buy from you. So what I've done here is I've logged into my starter Shopify account and then I've just gone over to the themes page and <clears throat> I've added the Dawn theme because I'm going to show you how to do that on the Dawn theme. So Dawn is probably the most popular free theme, but if you go down to this page here, you click visit theme store. <clears throat> I can just show you quickly how you can add Dawn or you can switch. Dawn. I'm pretty sure when you start a Shopify website or a Shopify store, it like starts off with the Dawn theme. So I don't even think that you have to do that, but just in case you can come over here, click free, scroll down, and then you can also choose one of these other themes. I'm just going to be using Dawn as an example because I think it's the most popular one. Click this and then click try theme. And if you click that, it's going to add that to your Shopify store. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to go back here and... Hold on one sec. Just refresh this. And we will get started. Okay, so click customize. And then what we're actually going to be doing is ignoring this part for now. So like I said, we're going to be building out a page that you can use as a pre-launch page to start growing an email list. So what you can do is come over here, hover over where it says home page, go down to password. So now we're going to be building out our password page. So what this means is that you can actually have a website where you have this link that you can share with people and they can, and this is sort of the easiest way. There's many other ways that you can start building an email list for a new business. I'm just going to try to give you a very easy, simplified version where you don't have to use multiple platforms. If you're planning on using Shopify to have host your store and host your website, this is really going to be the easiest thing to get started. So sometimes we just want to have a scrappy way to get started. So you're able to show this to people and they're able to opt in and then the rest of your website is still private. They would need to enter a password to get into your actual website. So obviously you don't share the password and don't make the password like one, two, three or something. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to update the logo. So come over to where it says theme settings, click on select image. I've already added my logo in here just for time purposes and to make this video as, as quick as possible. And you can adjust the width of it. So if I come over here and I, and I hover over the desktop logo, see how it makes the logo bigger. Um, I'm going to try to keep the logo pretty small because when you have the logo that's really large here, it takes up too much of the page. Like this header and navigation area is way too big and we want it to be as small as possible. So we're going to keep that for now. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to adjust the background image. So again, I've already added images in here and I'm just going to show you a couple of options so we can see what they look like. So you can see here that it pulls the actual image, but then you can come over here and you can adjust a little bit. And so sometimes when you're building out a website or a landing page, it's going to look different on desktop and mobile. So if I click on this right here up at the top here, we can see what it looks like on the mobile view versus uh, desktop view. So most of your people will be coming on through the mobile phone. So always make sure that you're optimizing for mobile, but I'll show you how to adjust for both. So if you come and scroll down, you can see banner height. So say you uploaded an image here and you're like, oh, this box is covering the part that I want to be visible. You can kind of come over here and play around a little bit. So you could click like adapt to image and you can see what happens. So now the block sort of like there's more space up here. So then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click desktop content position. And you can kind of just play around with this kind of stuff. And if you haven't done this before, you're going to have to play around with it. There's no, you're not just going to upload an image and it's going to look perfect. You have to play around with the, the size, where things go. So I'm going to actually click top center because I'd rather the block cover the top part. And then the bottom part, we can see the image of the person and their dog. So this is going to be a dog poop bag that I'm actually building out and launching as a real business. But 
I'm just using um, placeholder images for now. So you can see here that when I add the block and I move it to the top center, we can now see more of the image down here. So if I click bottom center, it moves it back down. So you can play around with that as much as you need to, but I'm going to click top center. And sorry if it's loud in the background, I'm actually sitting outside and there's a busy street behind me. So hopefully you can hear all the things, but I apologize of the background noise. I usually don't do record videos outside, but I'm pressed for time and I wanna make sure I get a video out this week. So we're doing what we need to do. So then again, you can play around a little bit more. Um, you can click on mobile, then you can kind of come down here. And if you untick this box here where it says show content below image on mobile, see how now the content is overlaying on the mobile, on the image. And I don't want that. I want it to be underneath. I want it to be really easy for people to be able to opt in. Okay, we're gonna go back to desktop. <clears throat> and then this looks pretty easy. And now we're gonna kind of want to start adding in text and making sure that our image or our email opt-in um, looks really good. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and start playing around with the text here. So when you're building on a pre-launch page, you need to have an incentive. You need to give people a reason to want to join your email list before you launch. So I'm just going to put in some quick text here just to put something, but you're going to want to put some kind of an incentive or like a selling point about your brand. So I'm going to put something like the only dog poop bags you'll ever need. And I'm going to make the text large. And then I'm going to put bio. No, I'm going to put eco friendly, cute AF, extra thick. Then I'm going to put, we're launching super soon. Join our email list and get 25% off when we launch. Okay, so something that just gives people an incentive to want to join your email list. So this right here looks okay, but honestly, the colors are really boring and dull. So I think we want to change the colors now. So if you come over here to color scheme, you can click change. So these are the ones that are just built into the theme. So we're going to want to change these colors. First, I'm going to want to come over here and, and hit save. And actually, we're just really quickly, we're going to look at our mobile view to see how this looks. So you can see here, this looks pretty cute. And as long as you use a relevant image that relates to what product you're launching, to be honest, I got this from pexels.com. P-E-X-E-L-S.com. You can type in all different types of things that you're looking for and find an image that doesn't look like a stock photo. So we don't want to use stock photos. We want to use photos that kind of resonate with the brand or product we're going to be launching um, if you don't have any actual photos of the product. So I found this from Pexels and my rule of thumb is always use smiley ha smiling happy humans in your photos on your website. So this is actually the back of a, of a human, but I thought this photo was super cute and I think it just feels nice. So I'm going to kind of go with it. Okay, let's get back to the colors now. So we're going to come over here and we're going to click edit scheme one. And I'm not going to have any proper colors like hex codes. If you already have your branding, then you want to grab your hex code numbers. But for now, I'm just going to kind of play around a little bit and just have like a purpley, ooh, no. Have like a purple color. Oh my God, that looks terrible. Okay, let's, let's, um, we're gonna undo this. <laughs> that looks very bad. So we're gonna actually come over here and we're going to change the color scheme and we're gonna do color scheme two because I think color scheme one is probably associated with the header and we don't want the header to change color. So we're gonna actually click this one. So we're gonna ch choose like a purpley color and then we're gonna choose text to be like a reddishy, like bloody orange color kind of thing. So again, we're just kind of playing around with colors. These aren't the actual brand colors, but to be honest with you, these are actually similar brand colors to what I'm actually gonna be using. So. 
Anyway, I'm going to click save and see how now like you've really transformed this into a page that actually looks pretty good in about 10 minutes. So you don't need a lot of time or energy to do this. You just need to have the right color combinations. You need to have um, ideally a logo, but if you don't have a logo, that's okay. Like you can create one in Canva or you can just write out the name of the brand. But the important thing is that you have something that looks visually good that incentivizes people to want to sign up here. Okay. Wait, what happened to my text? Okay. I feel like my text disappeared. So we're going to have to write it back in. Um, join our email launch list and get 25% off when we launch. So again, you could ideally come up with better text than this, but this is good for now. And I'm going to actually adjust the size of this. So we're going to make the second line like header uh, H2, header 2. And then we're going to make this paragraph H3 or paragraph. Let me see. H3. Okay. And then we're going to add the parentheses there, 25% off. And we're going to bold and italicize that. So now it just gives a little bit of dimension. And then next up, we're going to come over here and change the text because this font is pretty terrible. So we're going to come over here. See this little um, wrench looking thingy where it says theme settings? You're going to click that. And you're going to come over and click typography. And you can see here that the, the heading font is called assistant. And I don't like that at all. I want it to be more of like a blocky kind of fun font. So I'm literally just going to use this one right here because off the cuff, this looks pretty similar to the font that I actually have for the brand. But you want to kind of play around with that kind of stuff. So you can see here that that actually looks pretty good. I like it. So we're going to stick with this for now. And I'm going to come down here and click save without adjusting the video. And if you want to adjust the other font, you would just go back to the wrench, scroll down, and then you can click something else here. So again, there's ways that you can upload your custom font. Um, you have to do coding or you have to use an app that will adapt. I find sometimes, unless you're using an app, it can be hard to upload custom font. And so sometimes you have to just find fonts that look similar to whatever your font is. So anyway, so this looks like a pretty good initial email opt-in page that you can start to grow your email list while you're building out your entire website. So you kind of have to play around with things. You kind of have to have, you know, make things adjust a little bit. But I would say for mobile view, this looks good. Um, ideally, you have the call to action like visible above the fold here. But I think this is good enough for now. And then on desktop, again, um, this is a great desktop opt-in page. And so you would either publish this. And then once you kind of publish your website with a password, and I'm going to show you where to go back to the password page. So you come down here and you click on preferences. And so right now, this is a tester store and a development theme. Um, I'm using my developmenter login for this. So I can't really publish anything to show you, but you can find videos that show you how to publish your website. It's super easy. But what you need to do is you need to have it password protected. So make sure this is ticked off. It says restrict access to visitors with the, I'm sorry, make sure this is, hold on. I forget if you untick this or not. Um, but basically you need to make sure that there's a password and that you restrict access to people. So you can see right here, it says, your store is in development to let visitors access your store, give them the password. And so once you kind of have this all set, you can share the domain link. And again, there's ways to get your domain sorted. Let me see if I can quickly show you how to do that. Otherwise you can find other videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. Okay. So I'm just going to stop this video here to keep this really short and sweet. I'll try to make another video that explains um, where to make your, like how to get your domain set up and make it live. But every Shopify store will have like a myshopify.com 
and you're able to use that link and then that's how you would you would share that with your audience in your email list i'm sorry you would share that with your audience and basically say we're launching soon join our pre-launch email list to get that first uh, discount when we launch our store so anyway that is it for this video um be sure to tap that subscribe button and if you have any questions, tap a comment below and let me know if you have other ideas for videos. I'm always open and I love when people say, hey, I wish you could make a video on this. Um, just let me know and be sure to give me a thumbs up in that video. All right. See you next time.